Okay, so uh, we're both going to be starting with uh, a soft winter wheat flour. Uh, we're not going to name brands, but Mom May prefers to use self-rising flour that already has the leavening ingredients added in. Um, I have to admit, I very often use it as well, but for the sake of argument, I'm going to be using all-purpose flour today, and I'm going to add the baking powder and the baking soda uh, separately, and we're going to come back to more of those later. You ready to start? Ready to start. Okay, we're going to start with phase one, measuring. I do it, she doesn't. Here we go. She will be spooning out her flour while I will be precisely measuring my ingredients. I use a, a digital scale that has what's called a tear weight on it, which means that I can slap a bowl on there and then basically subtract the weight of the bowl. Now, my man goes with two cups of flour, and I basically do two, only that my two cups of flour generally weighs out to about 10 ounces. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add four teaspoons of baking powder, which is the same as one teaspoon plus one tablespoon. Now, baking powder is interesting stuff because it's balanced. It holds both acid and alkal alkaline, so it will, uh, it can rise all by itself without any other chemical agents. And I'm going to add about a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, a tiny, tiny little amount. It's going to give us a little bit better of a rise, especially with the acid that's in the buttermilk we're using. But the reason I also use a very small amount is that it will flavor things. It's got a lot of sodium in it, and if you use a lot, you'll taste it. You having a hard time with that thing there? Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're done with the measuring part, right? The dry stuff? Yes. Okay, so you're ready to go. Give me a second. Let me stir this up. Oh, salt. Her flour already has salt worked into it, and you've got to have salt for any kind of bread, or it just tastes, I don't know, what does it taste like when you don't have any salt in it? It's just flat. Flat, dead, flat. So I'm going to add about, that's about a teaspoon of salt. You don't have to use kosher salt, but it's pretty much the only kind I use. Now, Mame has moved on, pulling in front into the uh, cutting in of the fat. Again, renegade that she is, no measuring, just, just diving right in there. Uh, and I like to use a cup of buttermilk. And since a pint is a pound the world around, eight ounces, fluid measure equals eight ounces of weight. So I can just look at my scale, and I've got eight ounces, which is the same as a cup. And I'm going to put in two ounces actually more like an ounce of butter. And I'm just going to add it straight to this until I get one ounce, which is there. I'm going to hit the tear weight again. She's already smoking me. Slow down, you make me look bad. <laughs> that, how old's that bowl? That's the only one I ever have seen you make, uh, make biscuits in. Well, it's older than you are. Well, a lot, a lot of things are, thank goodness, <laughs> that we're still at that point. I'm going to add also two ounces of shortening. So just break it up and work it in. This is a lot more fun than her method. All right, she's already going on the buttermilk. How much do you think you use? I never measure it. I just put in there what I think it needs and stir it till it's good. To stir it till it's good. But she and I both like a very loose dough. I'm going to add my buttermilk. I lost my spoon, Mom. Eh? Can I use yours? Can I use your sacred spoon? You make fun of my spoon. spoon. <laughs> It's a wonderful Just spoon, weighted perfectly for biscuit making. Oh, she's ahead of me already. This is looking pretty bad for me. You see how gently she's working it. This, these are the hands of a master right here. You don't see this kind of biscuit making much in America anymore. Barely patting it out, no rolling necessary. Can I put your spoon in the if sink? You want, yes. Okay. If you, you want to say? wash your rolling pin, you can roll it out. Rolling pins just aren't my cup of tea. I'm going to roll out enough flour to keep it from sticking on the board and then just turn out the whole thing. Oh, she's gone for her pan, her special biscuit pan, circa 1853, Ulysses S. Grant. <laughs> I don't even know where I put I my wish. biscuit pan. <laughs> I've got to run for a biscuit pan. Biscuit cutter, straight down, twist, pop out, down, twist. The twist is okay, but only if you've gone all the way through. Now, you notice that both she and I like to put our biscuits shoulder to shoulder, and that's because you'll get a better rise out of them if they're just touching. Pushing down in the middle is going to help the biscuit to rise evenly. Since the uh, heat hits the outside of the biscuit and works in, if you didn't punch it in, you might end up with a domed biscuit, right? Right. Okay, you're uh, 400... You want, you want my biscuits in the oven yet? Yes. Well, they're done, aren't they? Isn't it, why, why do you not want to sit around and, and like stare at them? 
You don't want them to rise till they get in the oven. That's what I'm talking about. Perfect golden biscuits.